Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro here. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how we can paint some simple 2D graphics in Java. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Your support will help keep this channel running. Okay, everybody, let's create some 2D graphics. But before we begin, here's my setup that I have so far. I have two classes, a class called main that just contains my main method, and an instance of my other class called MyFrame. And this class, MyFrame, extends JFrame, so it behaves exactly like a JFrame. Within the constructor for MyFrame, I have this.setDefault close operation, JFrame exit on close. I'm using a size of 500 by 500. This.setLocation relative to null. This allows the frame to appear in the middle of the computer screen and not just the top left corner. And lastly, this.setVisible is set to true. Now, I'm on Oracle's website looking up some Java documentation, and for the component class, the component class is a parent class to many of the Java GUI components that we work with. There is a paint method underneath the component class, and this has a parameter of graphics G. It takes a graphics object, and what this paint method does is that this method is called when the contents of the component should be painted, such as when the component is first being shown. So most, if not all, GUI components actually have component somewhere as a parent class somewhere down the line. And with our MyFrame class, we're going to be overriding this paint method and be drawing some stuff. So within this MyFrame class, let's define and declare what we want this paint method to do. So we'll say public void paint. And this has a parameter of graphics, a graphics object. And we'll just call this graphics g so g is going to be our graphics object and this paint method is actually called behind the scenes it's invoked automatically when we instantiate a component such as a jframe so we do not need to explicitly invoke this paint method it'll do so for us behind the scenes now with graphics it's somewhat outdated we're actually better off using something called graphics 2d which is an updated version graphics 2d is a child class or subclass of the graphics class and what we're going to be doing is casting our graphics g as a 2d graphic so for the very first line after we call the paint method we're going to cast this graphics g object as a graphics 2d object so let's say graphics 2d and let's call this instance g2d equals G, and then we need to cast this. So within parentheses, we're going to add the cast. Graphics 2D. Now this graphics 2D object has more options available to us as to what we can draw and do compared to a graphics G object. Now let's attempt to draw a few things. So there's a few methods available to us to do that. So let's say G2D dot, and there are all sorts of things that we can draw. Let's begin by drawing a simple line. So that's dot draw line. And there are a few parameters, a starting point, X and Y, all I guess starting coordinates, and then ending coordinates of where you want this line to end. So if our frame is 500 by 500, let's draw a line from the top left corner to the bottom right. And the coordinates for the top left corner of the frame would be where x is 0 and y is 0. And since the size of the frame is 500 by 500, the bottom right corner would be where x is 500 and y is 500. So there's just going to be one problem with this. This will draw a line. However, it's not necessarily in the starting position that we thought it would be. So here's the issue. With our frame, the size of the frame also includes this window bar at the top. So with the starting coordinate, it's actually starting in the top left of the window, and this window bar is somewhat overlapping our graphics area in which we can display. So it may be better for us if we were to create a panel, draw on the panel, and then add the panel to the frame. So let's actually create a class called MyPanel, which will extend JPanel. So let's create one more class, and then we're going to draw on this panel so file, new, class, we'll call this my panel, and then click finish. My panel extends J panel, so it will behave exactly like a J panel. And then we'll need to import something as well. 
and then we'll need a constructor for my panel. Okay, now going back to my frame, we're going to change a few things. We're going to get rid of this paint method, and since a panel, a J panel, is considered a component, we can actually call the paint method. So take the paint method from my frame and paste it within my panel. And then we'll want to create an instance of my panel. So let's declare this outside of the constructor, my panel, and we'll call this panel, and then instantiate it within the constructor. Panel equals new my panel. And we'll need to add this panel to the frame. So let's do that right about here. This dot add, we're adding our panel. And we no longer need a size, and we should probably pack this. So after you add all the components that you want, follow this with this dot pack. So this should fit nicely. Now what's going to happen is that this is going to create a panel for us, and then we should probably set a size for this panel too, before I forget. This dot set preferred size new dimension and we'll make this 500 by 500. What ends up happening now is that this panel is fully visible before we were drawing directly on the frame and this window bar at the top is part of the frame so it was overlapping a portion of the visible area so now this entire panel is fully visible to us. Let's head back to our my panel class and draw a few things within the paint method so we drew one line, let's change the width of the line. This is kind of like the stroke, the brush size that we're using. So we can actually change that. G2D dot set. There's actually all sorts of things that you can set, but we're looking for set stroke. And we can pass in a new basic stroke. And then we set the size of the stroke. So if we want this to be five pixels, we'll pass in five. And what we get is an extra thick line, and it's not just a one pixel brush stroke. You can also change the color too. So G to D, and this would be dot set paint, and you pass in a color. So let's say we want this line to be blue. Color dot blue. You can also pass in uh, some hex values or some RGB values too, but we'll just stick with simple colors. So now we have a blue line going across the screen. Let's draw a few other shapes. For now, I'm just going to comment out this line where we draw a line. Let's draw a rectangle. We type in the name of our 2D graphic, which is G2D dot draw. And there's all sorts of things that we can draw. Let's draw a rectangle. And this is draw rect, like get rect. So we place starting coordinates as arguments as well as a width and height for this rectangle. Let's say we want this to begin in the top left corner of the panel. So that would be where x is 0, y is 0, and let's make this 100 by 200. If you want this to be a square, you could make this 100 by 100. So now we have a rectangle on our panel, and it retains that blue color that we set as well as the stroke size. That's kind of like the line thickness. So if you need to draw another graphic, you can actually set the paint color to something else before you actually draw this. Let's set this to pink. I don't know why, I just picked a random color. And now we have a pink rectangle. And if you need to fill this, that's actually a different method. That would be fill rect. So that would be g2d dot fill. And you can fill all sorts of shapes here. We're looking for fill rect. And we'll keep the same coordinates. So 0, 0, then 100 and 200 for the height. And here's our rectangle in the top left corner of the screen, and it is completely filled. One important thing that you should keep in mind and know is that as you're drawing graphics, any more recently created graphics are going to overlap any previously created ones. So if we were to draw this line and then draw our rectangle, the rectangle is going to overlap this line, kind of like there's a z-axis. So anything that is more recently created is going to overlap any previous items or graphics. Let's draw a circle next. 
and I'll get rid of our rectangle that we have, as well as this line. We'll just turn these into comments. If you need to draw a circle, you use either draw or fill oval G2D dot. Let's draw an oval first. So this will be just an outline. Draw oval. Now the coordinates are the top left of the drawable area for this oval. So if we want this to start in the top left corner of the panel, that would be where X is zero, Y is zero. And let's make the width 100 and the height 100, I suppose. And we should have a, actually let's change the color too. G2D set paint. Let's make this, I guess, orange. Kind of like it's the sun. I suppose yellow would work too. We'll keep the same stroke size of five. And we have a orange outline of a circle or oval. And if you need to fill this in, you would instead use fill oval, which we'll do. G2D dot fill. And we're looking for oval. And we'll place this at the same coordinates. Same width and height too. And we have an orange circle or oval in the top left corner of our panel. Okay, this next one is a little tricky. This is draw arc. And let's set a color. So we're actually going to use draw arc to draw a pokeball for practice. G2D dot. Let's draw arc first, then fill arc. Draw arc. And there's a few more arguments. Starting coordinates, a width and a height, a starting angle, and an arc angle. So we'll place this in the top left corner just to keep things simple. For the width, let's make this 100 and the height 100. So for the starting angle, let's set this to zero and the arc angle will make this 180. So this will be a half circle because it's 180 degrees. Now, if we were to change the starting angle, let's say 180, it's going to flip counterclockwise. Let's practice drawing a Pokeball. So let's set the paint to red for the top, I would say, hemisphere. And set this to zero. And we're going to use fill arc. And we'll get rid of draw arc. Actually, we should uh, get rid of the stroke size too. All right, so we should have a red half circle. And the bottom's gonna be white, but I'm not sure how well this is going to display. So let's set the paint after we fill the first arc and color this white, color dot white. And we'll have the starting angle be 180, but we'll keep the full extent of the arc at 180. So it's another half circle. And we should have a Pokeball, or at least something that slightly resembles a Pokeball. I would say that's close enough, since we're just beginners at this. All right, we can also draw a triangle. And for that, we'll actually use a method called draw or fill polygon. And we actually have to pass in an array of coordinates or integers. So this would be G2D dot, and let's begin with draw, draw polygon. Okay, so this takes an array of integers and a number of points. A triangle would be three points, so let's just pass in three points. But we'll need to pass in an array of integers, so let's declare these right before we actually draw this polygon. So we'll say int x points, and we'll pass in some x coordinates. Let's say 150, 250, and 350. We'll pass in some Y coordinates as well. So this has to be another array of integers, and this will be Y points. Let's set this to 300, 150, and 300. And we should have the outline of a triangle. Let's set this to yellow. So that would be G2D dot set paint, and we'll pass in color dot yellow. Now we'll fill the polygon. 
It's the same process as before, but replace draw with fill. And we have a yellow triangle. It's kind of like a piece of the Triforce from the Legend of Zelda series. Well, one of them at least. We also have the capability of drawing a string of text on our graphic. G2D dot draw string. We pass in a string as an argument as well as coordinates. For the string, let's say you are a winner. So for now, let's set the X coordinate to zero and the Y coordinate to zero. But when we compile and run this, we actually cannot see the string. That's because it's hidden right now. Let's change this to 50 by 50 and you'll see why. So now the string is visible. That's because when we display the string, the starting position of our string of text is the bottom left corner. Since we set this to 0, 0, well, that's going to be the very top left corner of our panel. So it's actually not being displayed because it's kind of off screen. Now let's change the font and the font color of the string. G2D dot set font. And you can pass in a new font and pass whatever font you want. I will pick ink free because I like that font. That's a font family. Then we can pick a font style. Let's say bold and a size. I will make this 50, I suppose. You are a winner. And changing the font color is the same process as before. We just set paint to whatever color we want. What color do we not pick yet? Let's pick, why not magenta? And the font color is now magenta. Let's say that you want to add your own image to this graphic. I have this PNG file and it's called sky and I just created this myself. So I want to add this image to my graphic, my 2D graphic. So there is a method to do that. G2D dot, and that is draw image. And there's a few to pick from. Uh, so let's begin with something simple uh, here. So this takes an image coordinates and then an image observer. We have not covered image observer, so we're just going to set this to null for now. So we need an image and coordinates. We want this to begin in the top left corner. Now we need to create an image out of this file that we have within our project folder. Let's call this image and we're going to declare and instantiate this. So let's say image, image, and then within the constructor we'll instantiate this. Image equals, and this is a little bit different. We're going to create image equals new image icon and list the file name or the file path sky.png is my file name follow this with dot get image this will create an image out of the image icon and then we follow this with draw image and then add your image here and we should have our image added to our graphic and then you can draw on top of this image. This could be a background image, let's say. So I'm going to move this and place this near the top. And let's draw, I don't know, maybe the Triforce that we have. So I'm going to re-enable all of these. Why not the Pokeball too? Well, yeah, that image that we created is kind of serving as a background for us. So that's how you can include your own image into a graphic to display. Well, everybody, that's the basics of creating 2D graphics. This video is getting kind of long, so I think I'll cut it off here. I was hoping to walk you guys through some practice with drawing a simple landscape, kind of like what Bob Ross does with his paintings, but I might have to wrap it up here. So if you want a copy of all this code, I'll post all of this in the comments down below. But yeah, that's the basics of creating 2D graphics in Java. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.